Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be doing a Matchbox Caterpillar D9. I know I don't usually do Matchbox toys. This is my first one. This has been sitting in my collection for a long time. I have no idea where I got it. It's in pretty good shape, but somebody has come and painted it with a slightly different color of yellow. And it's kind of a matte uh, color as well. And so I'm going to be stripping that off and restore it to the way it originally looked. So this is a Matchbox King Size, number three. And it's got a rivet and then it's got this little spread post thing that I'm going to have to figure out how to take this base off. You can see it's been, the paint has been brushed on. On the sides it looks better, on the bottom it looks really terrible but at least you can see that it was brushed. So I'm using, this is my really awesome 3 8 drill. It's a, it's a split point and it's coated with something, titanium or whatever, but it cuts beautifully and I can do it very slowly as you can see until I've cut off enough of the rivet so that that base is gonna come off. So I'll push it up. Okay, so the rivet comes off, but that front thing is holding it in, and that's, I, I'm gonna use a riffler. This is a uh, small uh, toolmaker's file, and it lets me get into a tight spot like that and try and take down some of the material to make it easier to take off. Now I'm not gonna be able to squeeze this back or do anything else. Basically, I wanna take off the surface which I've done here and then try and pry it out of there. So that, and then when I pop it back in, it'll still have friction. So get a screwdriver in and there it goes. So that will leave me enough material that in the end I can push it back in. Now trying to take this thing out of here, there's a problem uh, because it's under the axles. And then also if I try to push it forward, the, uh, the shovel hits the front of the of the uh, grill on the on the main part of the casting, so you can't take this thing out without taking the wheels out first. Now the good side is that there is no mushrooms; it's just an axle, and I just need to push it through the wheels. And because the base is off, those axles will move. Normally, the axles are captured by those side guards. And uh, here I can get them off. They're a little bit tricky to get off because they're rusty. And they, and this one is giving me trouble. doesn't want to come out. Uh, so I'm just going to have to uh, maneuver it until it, uh, until it cooperates. It's kind of a challenging little thing to get it out of there. If it was more rusty, it would be a big problem, but it wasn't that bad. So once the axles and the wheels are off, then the, the base comes off and the base has the, has the shovel attached. So inside here is the engine and it's not held in with anything. And the paint looks perfectly intact. It's dirty, but I don't think I have to paint that or strip it or anything. So there's four castings. Uh, here, here's the base and the shovel, and these are held together with a couple of rivets. I can't see any other way of getting the rivet, uh, the rivets out, other than to file the end off of it. So I'm using my trusty uh, six-inch Nicholson file, where one edge has been ground flat, so I can file up against the painted surface and not worry about it damaging anything. And it's kind of in a tricky spot. And you can see as I'm filing it, I'm taking off a bit of the material, but that's not gonna show because that's gonna be completely covered by the wheel that holds the track in place and the track will hide it. And you'll see in the end, you can't, once it's painted, you can't see that I've, I've filed it at all. It's basically taken off the paint and not much material, not enough material that you can even see it. So even if it was a feature that showed, wouldn't matter. So 
So I'm using here a spring-loaded center punch. This is a good way to uh, yeah, put a little bit more foam in there. And it's a good way to push out a rivet like this. It gives it a lot of force and that pushes the rivet through through the casting. And then you can take it out using a pair of pliers or pry it off with, in this case, a screwdriver, a tiny screwdriver. So that came out pretty easy. And you can see that it's kind of curved. So that was under a lot of stress during its lifespan. So to the other side, basically I'm gonna do the same thing. This time I didn't even need the center punch. I filed it uh, smooth and pried it off with the screwdriver. Now I'm not going to be able to use these rivets over again and I'm not I, there's no way I can get that rivet spread out again so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to use something else and I'm going to use a small screw a, a 256 screw So there, back to the center punch and some washers, and I got that thing out of there. So yeah, so like normal, I will replace rivets with screws. So now to get the paint right, I've got my my Mr. Hobby colors, yellow and orange, and I'm gonna mix together the color. and And I have the color because whoever painted this thing didn't paint the shovel and of course they didn't paint the inside of the base either so it's easy for me to find the exact color it's not quite a bright yellow it has a tiny bit of uh, orangey shade to it so it's not really that difficult to mix up and i get there pretty fast so I put in some uh, leveling thinner for the airbrush and I'm using a Mr. Hobby an empty jar that was some other color which we'll see in a second because I'm going to put the cap it was it was a it was a jar of red paint that uh, was drained already so the motor looks fine it has a bit of material scratched off but it's not visible so now to strip the paint off of the main castings I have boiling water and caustic soda i'm outside here doing this i don't know what i'm going to do winter's coming and it's going to be more difficult and i guess i'm going to go out in the snow to do it so in a few minutes you can see the paint has come off of these things it's all in the it's in the water and caustic soda so we bring it back inside and there's just little bits and pieces that are clinging there but they are basically destroyed so it's just I'm using here a plastic bristle brush to get them off so they're, they're already off uh, but they're kind of hanging there now on this one I don't go in with a wire brush the casting looks really good and and to keep that rough surface I think it's better to hold the paint it's it's very smooth there's no damage to the casting because they painted over the paint and and uh, the whatever child was playing with this and uh, so the casting is really good and so I'm gonna leave it rough I didn't uh, do any buffing or anything of the of the material because it's going to hold the paint better when it has that texture on it and here I'm going with the Tamiya uh, white primer the fine surface primer that's the best primer I've ever found and I've given it a nice coat of primer and it's, and it's beautiful. So here I'm going to uh, prepare the what was a rivet and drill the stud out to thread for a what my usual which is a 440 uh, button hex socket head cap screw. So I'm drilling it out and I'm putting the uh, the, the cutting oil in there so that the material doesn't stick to the drill and then break off the end of the drill which happens if I don't do that and since doing this I haven't broken my drill um, so it's it's been successful so 
So again, a little bit of the cutting oil and my 440 uh, Osborne Blue Wizard top. But this is Matchbox toy, it's not a dinky. So there you can see my top has broken through the stud. So I'm going to have to restore it using JB Weld, which is an epoxy. It's a metal containing epoxy. And this one you have to dry it overnight, but it becomes very, very strong. So I'm basically rebuilding the post and I'm going to not use a 440. I have to go in with a 256 screw. So here's a 256 button head cap screw. And I'm just doing this with the hand drill now that that uh, JB Weld is very good, but it's much softer than the original casting. So it's not so difficult to drill a hole and tap it. And then here I have a bottoming tap so I, so I can get that screw in deeper. So these, this is the two sizes smaller than what I usually use on my dinky toys. So that's the difference with the matchbox. You got to use a smaller screw. Now here's the, uh, the shovel. The rivet goes in there, but I'm going to replace that also with a 256 uh, cap screw. So it's a little bit too small, not by very much. So I shave off the hole so that the screw fits in there. And because it's small, I can then go into the, the other casting, the base casting. And I and this is a different drill. This is a this is the top drill, and you can see it uh, drills through. So it so it's it was originally smaller than the top drill size. So this is a 256 tap. So this way the screw will go through the shovel over the clearance hole, and it will go into the base with the thread. So that's one side and I do the other side. And again, this is a machine tap. Normally people have hand taps. Machine tap pushes the swarf in front. You can see those little curls coming out of the other side. So I don't have to back the tap off like you would with a hand tap. And here I'm trying something new. I think I'm gonna do this from here on in. Uh, I've got a little piece of steel from the siding that I use for bases and stuff. And I screw that in, and then I'll be, I'll be able to use that to, to hold on to the part when I'm painting it. And I'm going to do it with all three castings. So I made up these little brackets and screw them in with the cap screw, like I would if I was putting in a steel base. And that gives me something to grab onto, and it's terrific because it holds really well. Those uh, hemostats like the thin material, so... This is my solution because otherwise it's very difficult for me to hold something like this shovel without some something to grip onto and this is perfect and then, and then the whole thing gets painted so i open up my little pot of paint and into the airbrush and this is i'm looking at this and i'm going okay this is funny as i mixed up a little bit of paint but this casting has a huge amount of surface area I had no idea. Just this one part used up a whole pot of, of paint. So I had to mix up more paint and then I had to mix up more again because my normal toy would not, would, it would use this paint for this part alone and I'd still have paint left over. But with this thing, there is so much surface area everywhere and you have to get all the different sides because all of it's visible. I had I had no clue how much paint I was going to need and I used up all of my yellow paint doing it and I was getting frustrated by it and I wasn't happy with the with the finish but when the whole thing dried because I used the leveling thinner it smoothed out and it wound up looking just great I, I was thinking when I was getting to the end of this thing that okay I'm gonna run out of paint I'm not gonna get a good surface on it and in the end I did I used up my yellow paint but I did get a beautiful surface and it came out just nice. You can see when you when you look at that, there's so much surface area. It was an unbelievable amount of paint. You need a whole jar of yellow paint and mix it with some orange to do this thing. 
you can't do it you can't just do it with oh, a little bit of paint no no it's the whole whole jar so I take off my little brackets and the parts look beautiful now the wheels they've got some paint because the child brushed paint on and it got everywhere so I'm gonna use my old-fashioned way is the traditional paint stripper and uh, drop these wheels in there and let them soak so I'm gonna let them soak for a little while and come back to them later on so here's the uh, the engine I haven't done anything to it uh, there's a little piece chipped off at the top but it doesn't matter it's not visible but there is some paint that uh, the child brushed onto the outer body and got a little bit onto the engine so I'm gonna take that off with a little piece of uh, I think it's 8,000 uh, sandpaper it's the micro mesh paper and then clean it up with a little bit of soapy water and that's all I need to do. The, the paint is really not damaged in any part that's visible. So better to keep the original paint job. So now back to my wheels that have been soaking in here. So we'll pull those out. And the paint's still on there, but now it's been softened. So I'm just going to take that paint off of these things. That's pretty straightforward. I don't want to do anything else with these wheels. They're, they look like they're like galvanized surface or something. But uh, that's the way the thing arrived from the factory, so it looks great. Now the axles, I'm going to use, uh, they're rusty. They're kind of a copper plating on them. Um, but to get the rust off, I put them into evapo rust and left them there. I didn't leave them overnight. They didn't need it and I wiped off the rust in a few hours and they don't look perfect but they're underneath the toy and I'm not going to be able to uh, replate them so here I'm replacing the uh, decal on the front so I made up a cleared decal that says cat d9 and I use soapy water this is my trick that works beautifully uh, so that they the water stays when I spread it on there it stays on this on the surface because it's soapy otherwise it beads up so then when I put the decal on I can put it in position and if I need to I can go and move it because it's sitting on that little film of soapy water and then once you press it down it presses out the soap and everything is fine so now we go to assembly reassembling this thing so I've got to get that engine in there so it just needs to be finessed into the right spot and I get my axles ready and the wheels so there's nothing holding those wheels in other than the base and it has those side wings and, and that's what holds these wheels in place so now I'll get the base and you can see it has those wings so now the wheels are are held in place so I push in the front onto that uh, little spreading thing and then I put my my 256 screw in there tiny little screw and there you go it's perfect so now I got these tracks these are from uh, Steve Flowers and they fit perfectly they look beautiful and it really makes the toy that thing's been sitting in on a shelf and for years and it looks crappy once you put the tracks on suddenly the whole thing makes sense and of course that's probably the first thing that the child loses uh, when he's playing with this thing so now we got the shovel going on and i got my screws with the heads painted in the process and in this case it's completely visible unlike normal uh, base screws which aren't visible unless you turn the toy over but this this is visible when it's sitting on the shelf so now for the other side 
Same thing. I don't tighten it down, it needs to move. And uh, there we have it. So it's nice with the tracks, it even rolls on the tracks, which is really important for, for when you're a child. So here's what we started out with. It's the, the casting is in really good shape. It, it wasn't played with roughly, but somebody came, uh, the child came and found some yellow paint and painted it a different shade of yellow. Didn't paint everything, didn't paint the front of the shovel. And you can see it's done with a brush by looking at the back of the shovel. And of course it lost its tracks or maybe the tracks got broken, but they're gone. Uh, so let's see what it looks like now. So now that looks like that looks like the toy that the child got one Christmas and uh, before it was played with and painted and everything else. And uh, it looks beautiful. The uh, paint is gorgeous and the tracks look brilliant on it. Uh, it I, could, I had a choice of colors of tracks. I think the green looked the most fun. Uh, it's a beautiful toy. So I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Uh, remember to subscribe and to like and share and, and give thumbs up and do all that stuff uh, so that uh, Hopefully that makes my channel a little bit more popular. And uh, if you subscribe, then you should get notification when I put up new videos. So until next time, be seeing you.